Greetings to all those that are watching us on social media sites and all those that are listening to us on this radio station. Welcome to the Living Truth Broadcast. My name is Pastor David McKivitt. I greet you in the name that is above every name, the wonderful and the powerful name of Jesus. This broadcast is brought to you for a ministry called Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that believes that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God. We believe in an unchanging Jesus who is still healing, still delivering, still saving, still working miracles today. And if you have a need, we would like to pray for you. You can contact us on telephone number 0777869031. Again, that's 0778690931. If you didn't get that number, don't worry. Get a pen and paper because I will be giving that number again throughout the broadcast. Of course, those that are able to watch us, they will see the telephone number on their screen. I'm going to go straight in to the Word of God now, and I'm going to read a verse of Scripture that is found in James chapter 2, and I'm going to read from verse 14 to verse 18. That's James 2, 14 to 18. What doth it profit, my brethren? Now a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith if it have not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. The title of the subject I'm going to be speaking on today is Five Ways to Express Your Faith in Action. Five ways to express your faith in action. Now, a lot of theologians debate this verse because it seems that James is contradicting the Apostle Paul. In James chapter 2, 14, he says, What doth it profit my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, the obvious answer to that question is no. Yet the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, By grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. So Paul is saying we are saved by faith without works. And yet James is saying we are saved by works. What is the difference? Well, first of all, the Bible does not contradict itself, and James is not contradicting Paul. They are talking about two different areas of salvation. Paul is talking about salvation from sin, and we cannot earn our salvation. We cannot work for our salvation. All the work that is necessary 
for our salvation was done by Jesus Christ. We cannot work to be saved because no matter how hard a sinner works, he's still a sinner. But Jesus done all the work that was necessary for our salvation when he went on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus took our sins. Jesus paid the price for our punishment. And that is why salvation is a gift. You cannot earn a gift. You cannot work for a gift. My late wife used to give me gifts for my Christmas and birthday. I never worked for that gift. It was a free. Of course, it did cost something, but the cost of that gift was paid for by my wife. Yes, salvation came by works. It came at a price, but Jesus did all the work and paid the price that was necessary for our salvation. It is a gift. Romans chapter 5 verse 15. It says, but not as the offence, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence one many be dead, how much more the grace of God and the gift of grace which is by one man Jesus have abounded unto many. You cannot work for a free gift. If you work for it, it's not a gift. Can you just imagine somebody giving you a gift for your birthday and then telling you you've got to pay for it? It's not a gift. Romans chapter 5 verse 16 says, And not as it were by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offences unto justification. And then in Romans 6 verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You cannot make yourself good enough to receive salvation. You just have to trust in the finished work of Jesus. You just come to the Lord, believing that he died and rose again, and you commit your life to him. So why did James then say, can faith save you? Well, first of all, James is writing to believers. He's not telling people how to be saved. He's telling people how to show their salvation. Paul is dealing with how to be saved, but James is talking about how we show our salvation. And in the next verse, he gives a hypothetical scenario. He says, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, and be ye warmed, and feel notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? In other words, he's not talking about you being saved from sin. He's talking about this hypothetical situation whereby we show our faith. Just saying, go in peace, ain't going to save that brother from hunger. It's not talking about salvation from sin. It's talking about a brother or sister being saved from hunger, being saved from nakedness. And it talks about showing our faith by our works. This does not contradict the Apostle Paul. In fact, the Apostle Paul, even though he says, by, by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not by works as any man should boast. He went on to say, we are saved unto good works. We are not saved by works, but we saved unto good works. We don't work to be saved, but we are work because we are saved and we show our salvation by our works. Once we are saved, we should have the evidence of salvation. And the evidence of our salvation is the good works that we do when we live a clean life, when we live a holy life, when we show compassion for those that are less well off than us. We are showing that we belong 
to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We show that we belong to a God who is love by walking and manifesting our love. We don't work to be saved. We work because we are saved. The Bible says work out your salvation. It does not say work for your salvation. We show that we belong to the Lord when we live holy, when we walk holy, when we talk holy. People see Jesus in us. I once heard a preacher say, don't look on me, look on Jesus. Well, friends, if they can't see Jesus in us, where are they going to see Jesus? And yet, if you are saved and you are walking and talking in line with the scripture, living the life, you're going to show that you belong to Jesus. When Peter and John met the man at the gate of beautiful, expecting some money of them, he said, look on us. No, he didn't say look on Jesus. He said, look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto leave. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Now he said, look on us. But when, they, when the, the lame man got up and walked, ran into the temple, when the people came out to give honour and glory, Peter said, why look on us? As if by our own holiness we have made this man walk. In other words, Peter was saying, yes, you look on us to see Jesus. You look on us to receive the word. You look on us to hear the word of God being preached unto you. But when it comes to praise, when it comes to giving honour, we should give honour and glory to the living God. Woe be to the preacher that seeks to be praised of man. We should never praise any preacher. Don't ever praise me. For the Bible says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou worship. So I'm going to give you five ways to express your faith. Number one, be a problem solver, not a problem maker. God wants us to be helpful to people. Like the scenario of that man who came hunger and, and naked, as James talked about when we give them food and help them, we become a problem sober. We should be looking around to see who we can help. If somebody comes to you and says they're having a problem with their husband, you ought to try to reconcile it, not make it worse. If there is division in the workplace, you should not be had into that division because problem sobers are in demand. Problem sobers make money. Because if you want a chair to sit on, that solves the problem. You'll buy the chair. Somebody is making those chairs and making money. You want to you want to buy water to make tea? Electric kettle solves the problem. The people that you make the electric kettles make money because they solve a problem. If you want to watch programs, you buy a television. Buying that television solves the problem because now you can watch What's on television? People that make the television solve problems. If people repair your car properly, they solve a problem. You will go to them over and over again and you will recommend them. Nobody ever wants people around them that cause problems. People want problem solvers. Look around today and see who you can help because this is walking by faith. Jesus talked about the people that walk by faith. When he said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. And they said, when did we see you hungry, naked, etc.? Jesus said, when you did it unto these. When you helped that person. When you solved that person's problem. You were doing it unto me. Number two, do something. Do something. Faith is a fact, but faith is an act. Don't tell me you've got faith and you never do anything with your faith. Faith is seen by what we do, not by what we say. Hebrews chapter 11 is the great faith chapter. But notice how the writer of Hebrews shows people's faith by what they did. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. 
It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by being dead yet speaketh. Abel showed his faith by offering the offering that was acceptable to God. God told Adam and Eve the right kind of offering. Adam and Eve made fig leaves. That was not acceptable. God took the skin of an animal and clothed them. He showed them that in order to be covered, an animal had to die. The only way you and I are saved today is because Jesus died and rose again. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 says, By faith Noah being warned of God, of things not seen, yet moved with fear, prepared an ark. Notice how the writer of Hebrews was saying, we can see his faith, because he believed the word of God, and he built the ark. We show our faith, not by talking about it, but by living the life, and by doing something with the faith that we have got. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go unto a place which he should after receive for inheritance, and he went out not knowing whether he went, he moved in accordance to the word of God. You see, walking by faith is not you doing what you want to do, but it's doing what God wants to do. When you live the life God wants you to live, you are moving by faith. When you are obedient to the word of God, you are moving by faith. You see, we, we've already said that Noah moved by faith when he built the ark. But who told Noah to build the ark? It was God. Noah didn't wake up one morning and think, I'm going to build an ark. No, he got the word of God and he moved by the word of God. And when he obeyed the word of God, he was walking by faith. The same as Abraham. Who told Abraham to get out from where he was? It was Almighty God. And when he moved by the word of God that was spoken to him, he was moving by faith. When you and I buy a Bible, read the Bible and obey the Bible and do what the Bible says, we are walking by faith. Faith is just simply obeying what God said. Number three, we are to stand up for what we believe. You see, Noah was told to build the ark. He stood up, he believed it and he built the ark. In Jude chapter 1 verse 3 it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Friends, we need to contend for the faith and in the world that we are living in where political correctness contradicts what we should be doing biblically. You cannot be biblically correct. You cannot live by the Bible and at the same time be politically correct. We have to make a stand for truth. 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood for us. He left his home in glory. He came down to, to earth. He was tempted as all we are tempted, and yet he stood for us. He needn't have gone on the cross, but he laid down his own life on the cross. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers. He laid down his own life. Jesus said, no man take of my life. I lay it down. He willingly went on the cross. He stood on the cross, bearing our sins. He stood for us, and we need to stand for him. People are afraid to stand for the truth, but we need to stand for the truth. Jesus said, if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my Father which is in heaven. If we want to be a Christian, we must live the Christian life and be prepared to die for what we believe. Martin Luther King once said, if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. Thank God I discovered something 
worth living for and worth dying for. It is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But this God, I may be politically correct, but one of these days I'm going to leave this world. I am not going to live on earth forever. But I tell you, one of these days we're going to live in heaven or we're going to live in hell forever. That is why I would sooner be biblically sound than be politically correct. The early church stood for what they believed, regardless of the consequences. We read in Acts 4, chapter 4, this was just after Peter and John had healed the man at the gate of the temple, and people was turning to Jesus, and, he come, and the Pharisees, the religious leaders, said to him, <coughs> don't preach no more in his name. No, at that time, it was not politically correct to preach Jesus and it ain't today but Peter stood up and said whether it is right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God I tell you friend we need to stand up for Jesus Stephen stood up for Jesus and he became the first martyr the apostle Paul stood up for Jesus and he was beaten, thrown in prison, and later beheaded. I like what Martin Luther King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at time of challenge and controversy. Where are you standing when it becomes a hate crime to proclaim what the Bible says about holiness, about marriage, about how we should live. Where are you standing? We need to do what the songwriter said. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Number four, when we move by faith, we must never give up. There can never be a surrender. When people walk by faith, they never take no for an answer. Noah carried on building that are oh, on dry ground, even though he was ridiculed. Even though he was mocked, he carried on building. Four men carried their friend to Jesus Christ. But when they got to Jesus, the place was full up. They couldn't get in. But faith never gives up. They climbed up on the roof. They took the tiles off and they lowered him down. Faith never gives up. When we stand by faith and walk by faith, there can never be surrender. The woman with the issue of the blood ran out of money. She had given everything she could to the doctors, but she never gave up. On the way home, she saw Jesus, and there was a crowd, but she pushed through the crowd. But friends, if you, faith always pushes through. Faith never gives up, and she pushed through and touched the hem of his garment. Because faith never gives up. And number five, most important, faith will call us to be holy. And we will show holiness in the way that we live, in the way that we walk. When we walk by faith, it will affect every area of our life. Holiness is the word that is missing today in too many of our churches, too many Preachers on television are talking about how to get rich, the prosperity gospel, but God's word is holiness. You can, being poor will not stop you getting to heaven. Being sick will not stop you getting to heaven. And we will pray for those that are sick. And the telephone number to call us on is 07778690931. That's zero treble seven eight six nine zero nine three one. But I tell you, friends, too many preachers in our day are telling people, the more holy you are, the more wealthy you are. Well, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said in Luke 12, 15, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of your righteousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things that he possesseth. Friends, we need to seek to live holy. You can get to heaven poor, you can get to heaven rich, you can get to heaven sick, and you can get to heaven healthy, but without holiness. No man should see God 
We need to be holy in all manner of conversation. No more dirty jokes. No more talking things or doing things that go contrary to the word of God. We are to live holy. So let me give you the five things that we need to do when we are walking by faith. One, be a problem solver. Two, do something. Be active. Number three, stand up for what you believe. Number four, when we move by faith, we will never give up. Number five, be holy. Well, we've come to the end of this broadcast. Let me remind you of that telephone number again that you can call us on. 07778-690-931. That's 0 778 690 We've come to the end of the broadcast. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKivitt saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life. The door. If you believe in Him, you shall be saved. Cause God's free gift to you is eternal life through Jesus Christ.